I think uh, should change. So there are more factors that are, uh, um, what do you say, hindering the making of an entrepreneur than those that are in. So that needs to change. Thank you so much. So we have Varun here. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, initially, before you came, we were talking about how we find entrepreneurs of peace. We basically, we, you know, work against all hours and become Buy what are the rules and become somebody, right? So, what do you think? You know, what is that makes an entrepreneur? What is the DNA of an entrepreneur? And how can you start up? You know, what would be your first? What is the impetus to start? Yes. Uh, no. So I, it was me who went, 
I had got the first internet line in my hometown, you know, and uh, we in the process we uh, educated more than uh, more than more than 300 students. You know, and today they all some something, you know, they all came from rural community. So that back then it would be opposed to start that, and come to 2009, I was bankrupt when I was about to get married. One of my startups had failed, but then my father-in-law looked at me and the way my attitude was, what I can do, and he said, no problem. I, I give you my daughter's hand, you know. So that, that I feel is the beginning of a new era in India, where a middle class man is giving his hand to one of our who's post that and who's bankrupt. Now we are alive. Yeah, I think it's very important to I think you got lucky there. <laughs> but I think uh, I just, just want to add one more thing. It's very important to know that line of thinking. What is entrepreneurship and what is business? Right? A business is started to be sold is to make profit at the way it's done. Right? You invest a certain amount of money and you want to get profitable from the first month onwards. Entrepreneurship is when you're trying to solve a problem. Right? And you're trying to solve a problem by building a product. And you're not focusing on money, at least for the first time. So all this talk about none of these companies are profitable. They don't want to be profitable. They're trying to solve a problem. Did you ever think of a profit of your app that have capitalized? So you can't ask questions like, would I want profitable? They're not going to get on the last and this. They're not trying to be profitable. They're trying to solve a problem. And they're trying to solve a problem on that scale. And in a country with so many people. The idea is not to be profitable. The idea is to build that product, solve that problem. And once you do, there'll be so much money out there that you wouldn't even be able to count it. So it's very important to know what is a business and what is a problem. A business is starting a business for the sole reason to be profitable from day one. Entrepreneurship, you, you have to be profitable eventually. But that's not the main aim in it. Eventually you solve the problem by doing it. Let me just take on what Bruno said. I don't entirely agree with you to a large extent. But yes, I think uh, uh, you know, what Varun says that you're there out to solve the problem, absolutely. You're not there just to make money. However, the long term viability uh, of any business, I and mean, let's take, uh, lots of, let's, let's take the dot com business. Uh, I don't know whether you, you remember the dot com era. It's the same thing people talk about in the dot com, and let's solve the problem. Of course, internet is very early in the way it is, you have to structure it, nowhere close to what it was today, and all of that. But sometime, at some point in time, uh, a business needs to be sustainable. Now, that does not mean that you should not have a vision. As he rightly says, you start with a vision. And one of the things, uh, uh, I make a prediction that you will have a bloodbath in the internet businesses in India. Okay, I think it's, it's a no-brainer. There will be a lot of companies which actually start out of money to solve a problem for reasons either to do with the fact that uh, uh, they, don't have, uh, they don't have a good vision, or they're not, they're not persistent in their efforts, or, or they fail to get up after they have failed a couple of times, or they fail to learn from experience. So you're going to have a bad path in the business as you, as, you, as you go forward. But having said that, uh, it is important for any entrepreneur to have a consistency of purpose. And I can talk from my own uh, uh, experience over the last 25 years or so. Uh, one, of, one of the big learnings that I've had, when I got into business, as I said in my opening statement, conditions were not what it is today. Uh, if you were to go, to any college or any, any, any uh, forum and say how many people really want to be entrepreneurs, you would have one or two, as I said, it's the odd guy out who will stand and say you want to be an entrepreneur. And, and that guy really, uh, really stood out about it. Now, today it's the other way around. Uh, but I've, I've been going around after I exited in 2012, I've been going around giving lectures. I asked this question of, of people in colleges, you have three fourths of the, of the college saying they want to be entrepreneurs. The fact is, most of them will not get into entrepreneurship, but there is an intention. So, so things have changed. When I got into business, uh, one, I liked focus. All I knew was I wanted to be an entrepreneur. Vaguely, I said, yes, I will get in the service business. Market research is something that, that didn't require so much of investment. I was just a generation entrepreneur. My father had died. Uh, we had no money. I didn't put up savings for the first couple of years that I actually worked in business. Uh, and then for service businesses, for what uh, I thought was viable. However, when you get into these service businesses and you don't have money rolling in, you think that yes, let's get into this other business. So we got into financial services. 
let's get it training. So we got into training. This is uh, uh, you know, uh, in fact, computer based training in the 85th is not our own. We, we actually matured into that business. But one of the key learnings that I've had is the fact that you need, one, a consistency of purpose, and two, a focus on what you do. Uh, it's very, very tempting for people that they do not succeed uh, in, in whatever they are attempting to do or the problem they are trying to solve to get into supplementary uh, uh, business, to supplement whatever they are. Because today it's far easier to raise money. If you are in a good business, you've got a good uh, business plan and, and if you've got a good concept, you've got some kind of plans, raising money is the least of your problems. But back then, it was a very, very difficult thing to do. Therefore, the temptation was to get into a large uh, number of businesses. The same thing I see happening today, even though uh, it's far easier to raise money. You find people getting into a whole host of, uh, uh, you know, putting their hands in different pots, so to speak. And that, I find, is something that would be very, very counterproductive in the long run. At least, uh, that's one of the biggest learnings that I've had in business. Uh, but otherwise, yes, as, as Varun rightly said, I, I think you don't get into, into business just for the sake of money. Money is just, it's just, it's, it's just incidental. If you do well, you solve your problem, you end up making money. And that, that's something that I Manish, I uh, just want to make it very focused. Yeah. You can add to that. So you have written a book about uh, teenage entrepreneurs. How and you made a statement earlier today that the quality of teenage entrepreneurs from colleges has been improving. Yeah. Yeah. Can you just share some anecdote, some idea about what these people are and how what are the sum of factors that is actually what we're doing to it? Yeah, sure. Yes. So uh, this scene is really improving now and uh, we have discussed about it earlier. Uh, see, I think what I've found is uh, entrepreneurship for me is all about an idea. Sure. It's yeah. all about chasing an idea. So you've got something in your mind, you see a problem, you see an opportunity, or it need not even be bad. It could just be, you know, I consider all artists to be entrepreneurs. So they go after art and they promote that art, they promote such beautiful work, but when they create the work, the point is not so much in promoting it. That is that complete immersion in that work, which I find so beautiful in entrepreneurs. Yeah, and I'm finding that starting very happily so, starting at a very early age. So there is a lot of buzz in the media, a lot of buzz in the media, startup events, you know, starting from college, starting from early on, etc. This used to happen in the US 20, 25 years back. It's starting here now. So that's what this book of mine, the underage CEOs, actually uh, showcases. So I've gone around speaking to us, I've spoken to about 100 uh, different entrepreneurs from different parts of India, and I've finally picked people from diverse fields. So that's a heartening fact. There are lots of people who are building uh, apps for the same building apps, delivery platforms, e-commerce that they keep the poster boys, right? But the counterpoint is also true. There are a lot of young people thinking about education, rural education, urban cleaning, uh, sanitation, renewable energy, stuff like that. It's extremely interesting stuff. And India is uh, a storehouse of problems, a storehouse therefore of opportunities and a store of stories. So these guys have latched onto that and I'm finding that very fascinating. So when I visit colleges and talk to kids, uh, I get questions like, you know, I want to be an entrepreneur, I want to start up and blah blah, but I've also seen a different set of questions emerging now. How can I solve a very local problem? How can I get back to my town and do something for my town? Those are the kind of motivations that I think are very, very important for an entrepreneur. Yes, like we said earlier, it's a journey. It's not so much about making money. And if that can be tapped or you know, seeded into people at a very young age, I think they will get out and do some very good work. Which is what is happening. Okay. And, and one small thing is, it's not restricted to the big city. Huh? And unfortunately, the media covers only that. Yeah, from Gauhati to Vaisal to Pailupo to Kwanlu, uh, and even deeper than that, even in the hinterland, I'm finding so many people putting out unsung ventures, going to work. That's great. Yeah, I think uh, it's happening planning that is that's something that's amazing. So one thing about this uh, about panelists here today, one thing very really unique is all of us are entrepreneurs. All of us are also authors. So it's a first of all entrepreneurship such an art of an ordeal and on top of that you take up another ordeal that is to write, which is like equally difficult or challenging and time consuming both from emotional perspective, time, effort, everything. So it's like what I, you know, compare it to is like a warrior poet, you know. You fight a war, but you also, you take a pen and, you know, write stories. 
it's amazing how we become this thing, right? So I want uh, one of you to just maybe take us through a journey of how you actually came an author. Why was it important for you to write? Well, I, I, I'm not a writer, but I'm not an author at all. Mm -hmm. The most number of words I've written in my book is like my books. Uh, so uh, I said, there was this character that I put on one. So basically your mom has spent more time in your life. Uh, so I was like, uh, I started writing a lot of blog posts on one. So he really frustrated me a lot. And then these kids started reading these blog posts like, hey man, John uh, Warren is like man on one. And uh, you know, keep writing more about our one. Then somebody came and told me, why do you write a book about our one? I was like, oh, why do you write a book? So I moved in on a book. Uh, and the first thing I showed up from people was like, 50,000 words write a book. Which is like all the words I've ever written in my entire life. So I was like, how can I write 50,000 words? Uh, but then I wanted to from motivation, so I decided to make a show. Uh, and I started writing, uh, uh, and I soon realized that writing a book is nothing about just putting your thoughts on mind so good. That's just about it. That's writing a book. Uh, it's exactly that. This keep on writing on mind so good as writing a book. Uh, so I, I started writing and the word got to be very tricky sometimes because uh, it does not increase no matter how much you write. Uh, so I wrote 8,000 words and I was stuck at 10,000 words and I'm like, oh man, I'm fucking I've written so much, I feel like I've written my entire life story. And I said, I've only done more work to And it's really frustrating because it's all you want to sit alone and do it. You can't work with your friends, you can't chill, you can't hang out. You're sitting there writing a book, getting bored like hell, and you just want to get done with it. Now, after some time, you're like, I wish somebody else had done this writing to me, I know exactly what to say. Uh, so, I somehow managed to finish the book. I had some 10,000 spell checks. Uh, I was like, I'm not going to get it. So I printed it at the local Xerox shop, spun up on it, sent it to uh, the first publisher that showed up in Google. And a month later, it wrote by saying, uh, you want to publish a book? And I was like, oh, what if people want to get published? If, if I can get published, anybody can get published. Uh, and coincidentally, it was his publishers. Uh, but the book, I mean, yeah, so I don't have to worry about the spell text and the editorial and all that. The idea would be that and all that. So I was happy that now I want to write it more. Uh, so they, they, they did all of that, they launched the book. Uh, and what surprised me was that my story was some, something that everybody wanted to do, that everybody had to do. And the book did, did really well, it sold like three lakh copies. But then I soon realized uh, that Indian people like to make stuff to be like free. So I buy it at home and I put it on buttons. Uh, so people can download it immediately, right? Uh, so more people could read it. And guess what? It got downloaded double at the time it got bought. And uh, now, that uh, is the making of the book. Uh, but what it did was, this entire journey, it was something really cool because it basically gave free marketing to my company. Right? So basically, the rules of marketing are to pay somebody else to market your, your company. Right? You have somebody else to market my company and I'm going to pay for So those are the interesting things that can happen. And I'm, I'm telling you, writing a book is the most overnight thing in the world. You can go back and they start writing and be an author in the next six months. Because it's that easy to get published. Because there are not enough writers. Every publishing house is looking for writers. Each and every one of you sitting in this room can become a writer in the next six months. All you need is your head and Microsoft Word. That's all it takes to write a book. And before you know, you actually have 10 publishers running up you saying, can I publish a book? So yeah, that's my publishing journey. That was very encouraging. I think it not gives us enough reasons to go back and start writing a book now. So, uh, thanks so much for that. So, it was very interesting as well. So, Shidas, if you can uh, let us know how you became an author. My, my, my journey is not as important as yet. It is, it is due to come out next month. So, I still can't technically call myself an author. So, I think it's most of the other things. Uh, but I would like to bother uh, about a very really enthusiastic thing. So, I think incident by company in 2012 when I decided to take a sabbatical. Uh, I had some invitations to teach, to speak to students, to teach in colleges and stuff like that. Now, uh, with all these gadgets one carries around, I thought, why not take some of these talks that I gave? So, so talking was, because somebody, some, some parents made a comment in the morning saying that it's easier for Indians to actually speak than to spell and actually have the discipline to write. And therefore, what I did it was just kind of uh, take all those speeches that I made. And I found, as I said, I found a lot of people, a lot of interesting questions coming out uh, from the audience. And my responses to it based on my experience. Uh, 
very fairly fairly interesting uh, stuff. So so I would recommend every one of these uh, stuff. I didn't have the discipline system right. Therefore, I would go back and get it transferred because I used to be long ago in the market research business. So very easy for me to actually get a contract, give it to somebody and say, okay, now transfer whatever I've spoken. And then they said, it. So really speaking, I think the editor rather than I mean, I found out the editor rather than right. So I just I just spoke. I got somebody to actually transcribe it, write it, and and the rest, as they say, uh, all depends on word and how fast you can get it into word and and uh, over the old I had this 50,000 words. Uh, my book is completely about my experience. So uh, 30 years of it, uh, interesting experiences, lots of inner failures. In fact, most of it talks about more failures than successes. Nine businesses, six failures, uh, one decent two decent successes, one so so on so, so much so. So I could write more about failures and successes really. And uh, as I say, I'll, I'll leave it to, for the rest of you to actually read the book as it comes out. Please pick it up and see what it makes me interesting. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure, sure. So this, like I said, I realized you're the closet writer and blogger, right? So you should keep writing an archive. But this book, the other exclusive came about because of complete frustration with my work life. My corporate work life. Extreme frustration. This is probably to do that. So I you know what? I wrote this book, um, uh, researching evaluation check research, whatever, talking to 100 entrepreneurs, building that level, which has been featured in the book. Traveling, meeting them, spending time with them in their offices while I'm holding down the job in three months. Yeah? Starting with this, manuscript sent to the publisher. So that was the level of drive which came from first. Yeah? At one level. Because I knew I had to get started on this black man, on this writing plan. And this is going to be followed by other books and all that. But that's one part. The other part is, like I said earlier, uh, lots of questions used to be thrown at me whenever I go to colleges, interact with them, mentor them, talk to them. So, uh, how does one do this, how does one do that, I don't understand what I need to do. I saw a lot of fence sitters, you know, undecided on uh, doing something that they really like or getting into something that their parents wanted them to do. So, it was a coming together of this and that, that I, that made me write this book. And uh, I went around, traveled and uh, it was, it was superb and I think that was the heady experience. I, I became a toddler, you know, for some time. So, there were these times when I was out of home traveling. And then there was a spell in office, and then I would come back right late at night, right on weekends, and my wife would not get to see me for hours on end, and then I would emerge from the room and then ah, take a look at the fresh air. So, good, good stuff, good fun. Okay, that's awesome. So, I thought I'll just share uh, how I get to know them. Uh, I think everybody has their own uh, you know, way of getting started. Um, I never thought you know, I'd probably be an author ever. And uh, in 2007, uh, I started a company with some of my friends. It was my internet-based company. It was called Jobbyhigh.com. It's practically like Glassdoor back then. We started here with the guys up there. And uh, we were doing quite well to start with. Um, a lot of dates, you know, back then, uh, we had more than our Mac users. And next one? Okay. So, but then ultimately we went bankrupt. I started doing well. That was because we never focused on monetization. You know, we always went about creating our vision, you know, how it is to get traction and stuff. So it was a nine and sitting back up at home, you know, thinking, what, what am I supposed to do this, basically. So and then a very interesting thing happens in the night. I decided to get married. So I was dating a girl and I was madly in love with it and you know, we had to get married. It was a lot of pressure from my house. Uh, so we decided we're not going to pay money. So first of all, I'm bankrupt. On top of that, I get more money and uh, get married and I come back. I'm sitting at home thinking, man, what do I do next? What do I do now? I'm so frustrated with my whole failure and all that. So out of the blue, one of those days, my uh, friend of mine calls up and uh, he told me that he's going on a journey across India. He said, I said, okay, where, where are you going? So he said, uh, he doesn't know where he's going to be for us, he knows whatever. I'm taking my bike and I'm going across him. And he was he had basically quit the job he was going across. So I was amazed actually to hear that. And I wanted to do that, you know, was, the failure was so huge in my mind that I want to quit everything and go. But I couldn't do that, you know, how do I ever tell my wife I've just been married in you know, a month or so? But then this, 
I mean, I need to write about somebody who's in my situation, but then goes on that journey, you know. And uh, I started writing about it. And one of those days, another interesting thing happened. Uh, I got a call from a Canadian company, and uh, they told me that they wanted to hire me as a CEO. I thought it's a prank call. I said, man, you guys know that I just went bankrupt in you know, Google for me. You know, people, people only write about you when you're either successful or you're going bankrupt. You know, you know the press and all that. So I said, you know, see some kind of joke going on there. He said, no, we're very clear. You know, we want to hire you because of the experience you got in running your previous startup. You know, I had built my startup on moving on previous technology. It was very, very rare at that time. You know, now it's kind of rare. So they wanted to come and, you know, kind of help them out in that. So one day I was like, the second day I was a CEO of an uh, MNC, you know. And that showed me that failure is a myth. Failure is like something strong in entrepreneurship. There's nothing called failure. But that's what, that's how it started. You know? And then I started writing a book. I got published over five years and it went on to become a bestseller. Uh, it's called Music Management. It's all about how to always do guys small start in the guys after going back. So I think each one of us had you know, our own experiences that you know, forced us to you know, come and go for it and uh, write about it. So we have like three questions. Uh, time for uh, one last question here. I uh, just want to uh, check a uh, few things. You know, how well do you think that Indian entrepreneurs have been chronicled? You know, in the West, there are a lot of books coming out for you know for entrepreneurship, business, and all that stuff. In our market here, uh, it's not really that natural. Yet. So, uh, what if you want to, uh, you know, shed some light about what do you think, what we have, have we done enough, and uh, also some of the great books that have come out, talking about entrepreneurs, what do you think are the help the audience? I don't think, uh, yeah, I don't think there are books on Indian occupation yet. Occupation itself is still thinking in India. So I don't think there are enough books. Uh, all the books that I read when I was growing up was about entrepreneurs. From the West, what is our autobiography? In India, you just have the Tata autobiography, the Vita autobiography, and that's the only thing you get to read, right? So I think, I think more and more people need to write autobiographies or autobiography to get more content out there. Because, because these are the things that are in India. For me, for me, it was reading these books and and, and and reading about these people and realizing that they are outside and they can do like something like. And in, in the US, uh, there's this very good, uh, you know. Even where everybody does, right? The person doesn't decide what his accomplishment is to become one. In India, it's a certain, what have you done in your life to be a one? What have you done that you should be a one? Nobody cares, everybody has a story, right? And everybody has a story to tell. Everybody in this room has a story to tell. And everyone has a story to tell. But you'd be surprised at how anyone's story can take somebody's life, right? And I think that is what is going on. You want more people to write. And what more people read and get inspired, I think, and a difference in their life. I think that's a that, that big one of the thing. I think she wants to be uh, and uh, we not even touch the tip I think there are so many fascinating stories. Like I said, there are entrepreneurs of all of you, right? But unfortunately, I think what we've done is alert entrepreneurship in a certain way, which means that only certain kinds of people are not seen as entrepreneurs, therefore, we don't know what they're entrepreneurs. Plus, to compound that, what you said earlier, we write only about success or spectacular failure, right? I think there's so much of other, so much of richness happening in so many diverse that are growing in India. There's no such country uh, elsewhere. So, the quick and easy answer to your question is yes, we need to go out there, mine those stories, and they're all there. We just have to open our hearts, senses, is it? Right. And, uh, and, and that, that's going to change, that's going to be a game changer, that's it.
heard of I didn't know, for example, that the Madras Harbour, and he is an entrepreneur himself, the Madras Harbour uh, was built between 1900 and 1915 by an American gentleman who used to work in Chennai. But that's not the amazing thing. When he retired in 1914, he gave a business plan which spanned right up to 1975. And believe you me, uh, this gentleman, this historian, has tracked this and said that's exactly the way in which the Madras Court they are. Because I said Madras Court is going to be, uh, it's going to kind of fill out by 75, you need to go to Eno, you need to go to surrounding places to, to expand and stuff like that. Now here was a guy who had tremendous vision. The awardees at that function span not just technology, technology of course is this main thing today, a lot of people from the technology area, but also span, in fact, the, the lifetime entrepreneurship award was given to, to, to Nali, uh, and he spoke in that way, which is actually spoke in that way. Fascinating story. You, 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 go, you, you look at the Chittiyas, in fact, one of the stories that he related was about the Chittiyas in, in uh, uh, Tamil Nadu. Fascinating story of how they got into banking, how they got into the human trade, how they got into and that is really the history of entrepreneurship. So we are seeing a space today, but it's not that it started today. It's existed for, for the last so many, so many years. And then to answer your question, I think we are missing out on real, on real stories which actually happen at, at, at so many places around the country. For example, in Diala or in, on the engineering expertise there, or expertise in Parameter, or, 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 or the weaving in Tirupur, or what have you. And these are stories which are not, not, uh, not in in fact, if you have these guys written by writing in vernacular and then translating into English or language where you know, uh, people can actually speak. So, so I, I think really, I don't think we are in touch with the guys in terms of business stories in India. Thank you sure, so much. So, I think now we can take the questions from the audience. Anybody has a question?